First question is, does it work? Can we replace aggressive chemotherapy? Can we replace autologous or allogeneic stem cell transplant with uh, CAR T cells? So certainly the preliminary data suggest that it works in a significant proportion of patients, maybe over 50% complete remission rate, and uh, maybe around 40 to 50% that are lasting six months or longer. So this is in a very heavily treated group of patients. So the first question is, does it work? Second question is, if it does work, is the toxicity manageable? And is it worth it? Uh, are there, is there mortality? And we know that in the ALL uh, study in children, the first AL, one of the early ALL studies, which was closed, uh, there were four fatal uh, uh, brain edema deaths uh, that were related to the treatment. And there is neurologic toxicity and blood pressure uh, issues that occur as a result of CAR-T. So we have to learn how to manipulate the cells to make them safer and what kind of pre-infusion uh, lymphodepleting therapy we should give to sort of balance the rate of growth of the CAR-T cells and the suppression of our own immune system. So that's got to be worked out. So does it work? Is it too toxic? And then if we find that it works great and that it's not too toxic, then the big question is what does it cost? Uh, and at the moment, uh, and preliminary sort of, sort of rumors around, I think, we're hearing that it's going to be somewhere between four and six hundred thousand dollars, probably legitimate. I mean, legitimate in terms of the right number, whether it's legitimate in terms of the cost, I don't know. And how are we going to afford this in our healthcare system? How are payers going to respond? Um, uh, will the cost eventually go down? I think a lot of the initial costs are related to recapping some of, recouping some of the uh, investment that's been made. Uh, we know that uh, uh, Gilead just bought Kite, which is one of the leaders in this, for $12 billion. Um, there's a, certainly a partnership between Celgene and Juno. Um, and people, the investors want to make back their, their money, and so there's high costs initially, but this is not sustainable, uh, especially if this technology is used across a wider frame. If it's used in myeloma and CLL and, and in some solid tumors, uh, how are we going to afford this?